is our God. Hallelujah. How great is our God. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He's a great God, a mighty God, an everlasting Father. He is all that we need. I don't know about you, but I'm so grateful for the great God in which we serve. Praise God. We're here this morning to celebrate our Lord for what he has done for us. And those of you that are here this morning, I don't know about you, but my heart melts to think of what Jesus did on that faithful day when he went to the cross and he was forgiving of those who did such a terrible thing in terms of turning him in in the first place. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't have a clue. They don't know what they're doing. But it was the Lord of glory. He did it all for you, for me, and the entire world. Aren't you glad about it? Praise his name. He's worthy. The Bible tells us that on that night, he was celebrating. They did this yearly in Israel. Uh, they met and they, took, uh, they, took, they uh, celebrated the manna, the, the, the celebrating what the Lord had already done for them. But he instituted something different. He came to them, and they could, we often refer to it as the Last Supper. And he took some bread, and he broke it, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you eat this bread, you do remember my death until I come again. Likewise, he took a cup of wine. He said, Take and drink all of it. For this is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink of this cup, you do remember my death until I come again. As often as you eat of the bread and drink of the cup, you remember what Jesus did for you. And so we're going to do likewise. But before we do that, I want you to examine yourself before you partake of the Lord's Supper. That means that I've forgiven everybody. That means I have patience with people. We talked about last week. We're going to talk about another word today. That means that I have let go of my past and I'm moving forward. That means that I have made myself as right as I possibly can. Are you perfect? No, none of us are. But thanks be to God, we're moving in that direction in obedience to the word of God. Let us take a moment and bless these elements our Father in heaven, we are so grateful for what you did for us. We don't take for granted that if you had not done it, we would be lost today. But thank you for dying on that old rugged cross for each and every one of us. We ask, Lord, that you would bless these elements that represent your body, and your blood. May they sanctify the very essence of our being that we may walk therein for we are a wretch undone apart from you. But with you we can do all things and for that reason we have to say thank you. Have your way in our lives Lord as we partake of this body, the body and blood of Christ. Bless it, sanctify it as it enters into our body. This is our prayer. We ask it in Jesus' most precious name. We indeed do pray. And let everybody say, Amen. Amen, amen. Now may we have a song. Praise God. I was lost. Jesus died on the cross. Say, I know it. And I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Save me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died. They pierced him in his side. They pierced him in his 
God for me. One day, one day when I was lost, Jesus died. The blood came streaming down. The blood came streaming down. One day, Jesus died on the cross. Well, they whipped him all night long. They whipped him all night long. They whipped him all for me, for me. It was my Jesus blood. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let, let's serve others right quick. Deacon, run back there right quick. I know it was a blood. One more deacon, one deacon. I know it was a blood. And I know it was the blood. Say it. Sit right here. Sit right here. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. I know it was the blood. Say me. They, they did pierce him all night long. They whipped him all night long. They whipped him all night long for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. I know it was the blood they me. Well, no, it was the blood. No, it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Jesus died on the cross. I know it was a blood save me. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may we commune together. The blood of the new covenant for, that was shed for your sins and mine and the entire world, may we commune together. Bible says, after they finished, they went out in the Mount of Olives, but on their way they sang a hymn, May We Do Likewise. Ooh, that blood, that gives me strength, hey, hey, from day. For it reaches. For 
for it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows and it flows to the lowest valley oh yes the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will to the high yes mountain and it flows to the lowest valley oh yes the blood that gives me strength from day Heavenly Father, oh, how sweet you are. You are better to us than we've been to ourselves, oh God. Lord, you loved us so much that you sent your only son, Jesus, to die on the cross that we may have life everlasting and more abundantly, God. Oh God, you allow him to be born of a virgin Mary, suffer on a Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, and buried. Oh, God, but he rose again from the dead. 
oh God, and we thank you, God, for being such a great God and awesome God, a God full of grace and mercy. Oh God, we know that we have sinned, God, and we ask that you will come into our hearts, God, that you will forgive us, that we will ask forgiveness of any sins that we have committed, God. Those we know of and those we're not even aware of, oh God. But God, we thank you for throwing those sins out into the sea of forgetfulness, oh God. And you said you will bring them back no more. Now who wouldn't serve a God like that? Oh God, we love you so much, God. Lord, we know the world is suffering, God, through turmoil, through war and trials and tribulations, God, through sickness, oh God. Lord, we know that you sit high and you look low. You sees all and you knows all, God. But Lord, you said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and we shall, you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Oh God, we are asking, seeking and knocking right now. Knowing that you are the God that can do all things, God. And there is nothing impossible that you can't do. And we love you. We give you glory and honor, God. Lord, we ask that you will bless the exercise of this service, God. Let it be all that you have designed it to be. Let your people cry out to you, God. Save, feel, deliver, God. Oh, God, we know that you are a great God. And we thank you, Father, for saving our souls today, for delivering us, oh, God, those that are in hospitals and rehabs, oh God, those that are incarcerated, God, those that are lying on their bed of affliction. Lord, we ask that you will come in and knock on the hearts of those that don't know you, oh God, that they will seek you from the free pardons of their sins. And we give you glory and honor, and we claim the victory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Come on, put your hands together. We're singing. Oh, his name. Singing. His name. Oh. First Baptist and good morning to those of you that may be visiting us. It's good to see each and every one of you in the house of the Lord. I want to pay special note to a brother who I always see here before I'm here and after I leave and all in between and that's Jasper Harris. It's so good to see you this morning. Praise the Lord. God has been good to him. So happy to see you here in the house of the Lord as well as those of you who may be visiting us today. We're so happy to have you here as well. And if you are visiting here for the first time, just kind of slip your hand up so I can see you. Praise the Lord. And they're going to give you a visitor's card. Please fill it out in its entirety. So let's thank the Lord for our visiting friends here today. Uh, Usher will pass you a visitor's card, if you will, fill it out so that I can respond to you in the appropriate way. Praise God. We're happy to have you. You're welcome here. We have church here every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. But prior to that, we have Sunday school. We have a wonderful Sunday school department. When I was downstairs, I heard, I heard the uh, uh, teacher sound like he was uh, really teaching, possibly even preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. But anytime you proclaim the gospel, it is preaching, teaching time. So uh, do come. We have a wonderful time at 9.30 each Sunday morning. Then a, a, um, today was an intercessory prayer at 10.30 and 11 o'clock service. But uh, intercessory prayer happens on first Sunday. Please, saints and those of you that are part of the body of Christ, come on first Sunday to join us for prayer for our community, for our, our state, for the nation, and for the world. We have a lot to pray about in times like these. Amen? So join us for that. Now, another thing I would like to point out is that we have Bible study every Wednesday night. I want to see each and every one of you there. Dedicate one hour. I promise you, in most cases, if I go over, it's two minutes or so, okay? I, I, I attempt to stop one hour. So we have a one-hour Bible study. Dedicate one hour from 7 to 8 o'clock on Wednesday night. We had a wonderful, wonderful time on Wednesday. And uh, we're in the book of James. We did get to verse 4. I think we read verse 4. So that's two weeks we only covered four verses. The people are just... Uh, explaining, uh, talking about these scriptures so powerfully until, you know, we, we're not in a rush. We want God to be, we want God to be uh, engrafted in our spirit. We want to learn and grow together. So Bible study in the book of James, chapter 1, starting with verse 4 and following. Please read it um, for this week. Read down to at least verse 12, and I believe it will bless your heart real, real good. Some of you need to read it because of what you may be going through. It might just do you some good. Um, so Bible study and Sunday school, please join us for those important things. We're happy today again to have, I think he said, uh, 
I want to make sure it's Aaron. There's two ways you can say Aaron. They say it's Aaron. Aaron. See now, I said it again. But, but people say Aaron. Some say Aaron. Aaron. Aaron Venable. We're so happy to have him today, as well as our drama. He's always a blessing to us here on this day. As you all well know, we are uh, looking for uh, someone to be that uh, musician or musicians to play for us. Listen, let me say this. It's important that we be non-biased in our selection in situations like this. And what we need to do, we want to be in the will of God. We want God to be to select for us. We shouldn't be in our corners thinking about, I like this and I like that. But we do have to do this together. We need to be praying. So saints, pray for the musician that God has for us. That is very, very important. Amen? All right, my brothers and sisters. Don't keep in mind that we will have training on Saturday, April the 2nd at 9 o'clock. This will be by uh, Zoom. We're going to start out with a Zoom one. I look forward to coming back together. We could do it in person, but I'm going to do this one Zoom. We'll see how that goes. Now, uh, keep in mind that it's easy to get on. If you have a hard time getting on, please call us. Call me, and I'll show you how to get on. You can do it through your smartphone. If you um, have a smartphone, if you don't have Zoom on there, you do need to download it. We can show you how to do that as well for those of you that may uh, have some challenges. Don't be afraid to call the pastor. It's okay. You can call me anytime, day or night. I'll get up and I'll uh, uh, support you in whatever way I possibly can. But there are other people you can call, Rhonda Burt, and others who can help you and navigate you through this process. Please plan to join us for a training on, on Saturday, April the 2nd at 9 a.m. Don't forget about your homecoming assessment. As I indicated, if you give 30 to $35 a week, come October, you should have your 365. We're doing a dollar a day for the entire year. So please, uh, in your giving today, consider that and give another $30, 30 to $35 uh, to reach your goal instead of trying to come up with the whole assessment at the end of the year. So please remember your assessment for a homecoming. I want to encourage those of you who are here today to read the newsletter online. I want to thank Jerry Murdoch and his team for what they do in terms of putting this together. You're missing something special if you don't look at read that newsletter. He does it, it's done once a month, but it's some encouraging, inspiring information in there. And you can get to that by clicking on our website, firstbaptistfuquay.com. Go to the bottom, scroll to the bottom. I think it's at the bottom, but if you can't get there, just look at, look, just look around a little bit, you'll find it. And uh, you can, but more importantly, you can, when you get on the front page, I think it says something about connect to us or something to that effect. You can put your email address and then it'll, uh, it'll come up as well. So I just want to encourage those of you who don't pay attention to our website, please get on. That newsletter is powerful stuff that you need to know about. I want to point out, I have a flyer here for an evening of theater given through the uh, cultural arts. Uh, cultural arts, this is going to take place at the Cultural Arts Center uh, on this Friday coming at 6 o'clock p.m. Those of you that are interested, please see Marion Tucker. She is here today and can give you more information. But this will take place on Friday, March 11th at 6 o'clock, right here downtown at the Cultural Arts Center. Uh, you'll uh, be blessed with some uh, wonderful things that will be going on, and I enjoy it every time I go. So join them for this important event. Now, before we sit down, before I sit down, each week I like for us to go through our theme. I want you to get this in your spirit, and we're going to uh, you we're going to say what the our theme is, and we're going to tell the scripture together. And let's do that now. Our theme is what's right behind me. Each one, reach one, coming from where Matthew chapter twenty-eight, verses nineteen and twenty. Let us read the scripture together. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. That is our theme for this year. We want you to, each one of you to reach somebody else. 
Bring somebody to church. Encourage somebody to come. Witness to somebody and get them to come and join this branch of Zion right here at First Baptist. You need to be excited about where you worship the Lord our God. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So let's win souls for the Lord. At this time, we're going to now have this wonderful choir to come back and minister to us by way of song, after which we're going to dive right into the word of God. Amen? Amen. Morning, church. How many of you know you're being blessed right now, just sitting in this audience? How many know the Lord did it for you? Come on now. Don't fool me. Come on now. Sing quiet. Come on now. Talking about the Lord. He keeps on blessing me over and over again. Keep on blessing me. He keeps on blessing me over and over again. Keep on blessing me. He keeps on blessing me over and over and over again. Keep on blessing me over and over and Keep on blessing me. Over and over, over and over again. Keep on blessing me. Keep on blessing me. Over, and over. over and over again. Listen, you woke me up this morning. You started me on my way. You gave me strength to make it. To make it through another day. You gave me two eyes to see. You gave me your tongue to talk. And I want to thank you, Jesus, for giving me the legs to walk. You just keep on blessing me. Keep on blessing me. Over and over. Over and over again. You keep on blessing me. Keep on blessing me. Over and over. And over again. Keep on blessing me. Keep on blessing me. Over and over. And over again. You keep on blessing me. Over and over, and over again. Look, I can move around. I can wave my hand. When you speak to me, Lord, I can understand. You gave me home to live in, where I can lay my head. I should have been sleeping in my grave to keep me alive instead. Keep on blessing me, over and over, over and over again. You keep on blessing me, over and over and over again. Keep on blessing me, over and over again. Keep on blessing me, over and over again. That's why I gotta tell you things. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You open door. Thank you, Jesus. That I could not see. Thank you, Jesus. You couldn't have done it. Thank you, Jesus. If it had not been for you. Thank you, Jesus. You did it for me. You made a way for me. You made a way for me. You made a way for me over, 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 over. You keep on me. over and over, over again. You keep on blessing me over and over, keep on blessing me over and over. Over and over, over, over and over again. I got eyes to see. I got eyes to see. Yeah, feel it to talk. I got eyes to walk. I got some food to eat. I got food to eat. You keep on blessing me. Keep on 
on blessing me. Keep on blessing me. Keep on blessing me. I'm gonna say thank you. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise, just even for that, just to know that the Lord keeps on blessing us. Amen, amen. Today we're coming out of 1 Corinthians again, uh, chapter 13. Uh, verse, if you want to turn with me, you may. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and starting with verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, starting with verse 4. Last week, we talked a little bit about patience, and some of us need to develop patience. Some of us are so impatient, in fact, it's just ridiculous. But I just want to say to you uh, that God is a God of patience, and patience is one of the fruit of the Spirit. And if you are a child of God, you have the Holy Spirit. And in order for the Holy Spirit to be really perfected in your life, or may I say the yieldingness of the Spirit, then the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. And then it says patience. And after that, I believe it used the word somewhere down there, kindness. Kindness. And so, my brothers and sisters, we want to read out of 1 Corinthians. By now, you should have 1 Corinthians 13. Verse 4 says, love is kind. That's all. Love is kind. The first portion says love is patient. Today I want to talk about love is kind. Let us take a moment and pray together. Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful to you for your amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. We all once were lost, but many of us have been found. We were blind, but now we see. Speak, Holy Spirit. Speak to your people in whatever way you so choose. And save a soul, make somebody whole. This is our prayer. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Today, I've entitled the sermon, Kindness. Kindness. Now, as I indicated, kindness is one of the fruit of the Spirit. And kindness, uh, is, 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 it, it cares for the feelings, if you will, of others. And it feels with them. When we think of kindness, you think of someone may be going through something and you feel a sense of sympathy. Sympathy has to do with the fact that you may have had a similar experience and your kindness will come forward saying, I understand where you are, been there, done that. You may have empathy. Empathy, you may not have experienced the same thing, but you can feel them in kind simply because they are going through something and you can empathize with them. So it can be sympathy and it can be empathy. But when we talk about kindness, we are talking about uh, one who is useful and helpful. They are gentle, they are sweet. Have you ever seen an unkind person or even an unkind Christian? 
My brothers and sisters, the, the, the person who's kind is considerate and they are gracious through all situations, uh, no matter the circumstances themselves. A person who is kind does not or should not be hard. Come on, somebody. They should not show indifference or be harsh or be unconcerned or be too busy or to be bitter. A kind person displays a spirit, a spirit, the spirit of God. Now, when the Bible says that love, this agape love is kind, it is saying something significant because agape love is that uh, unconditional love. It's not what you do for me that makes a difference. It means that no matter what you do to me or what happens, I can still be kind. Unfortunately, we've got some mean Christians. You unkind to me, I'm going to be unkind to you. Some of y'all sitting here right now to need to go apologize to somebody sitting right here in the audience and say, I've been unkind. I've been inconsiderate. I've been hard on you. Oh, Lord, somebody getting mad at me. Right now, I kind of don't care because I'm going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Folk, if you are a child of God, unkindness should not be a part of you. You ever known somebody that was really, really kind to you in some way, form, or fashion? You see, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, rather, oh, chapter 1, verses 5 through 8, Peter wrote, For this reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness and to godliness listen at this brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness love you see for if you possess these qualities he says in increasing measure they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus the Christ I've always been so captivated by the promise in verse 8 to how you can be effective if you possess these qualities in increasing measure. You see, my brothers and sisters, we ought to be growing in our relationship with the Lord and we ought to grow in kindness. Yes. See, uh, unfortunately, we have folk that want to do the tit for tat. Mm -hmm. They mistreat me, I'm going to mistreat them. They talked about my mama, I don't care about them. I'm going to talk about theirs or I'm going to get back at them. But my brothers and sisters, I have decided in my spirit. I was talking to somebody recently and they said, uh, uh, somebody think you don't like them. I said, I don't dislike anybody. I said, let them come and talk to me about that. I love everybody and I truly mean that from my heart. I cannot dislike somebody and think about going to heaven. I need to get this right. We all need to get it right. Am I perfect? No. But I tell you the truth. I want to get as close as I can to pleasing God in every way. We need to be kind to one another. I don't know about you, but uh, the word of God speaks to my heart. When I read it, it convicts me if I'm doing wrong or living in a way that's not pleasing in the sight of Almighty God. Another important passage in the scripture about kindness in Galatians 5, 22, 23. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, and peace. And then it says kindness. Kindness. Uh, yes, sir. Kindness. Kindness. Uh, this passage uh, is, is, is a famous passage because it gives the positive effect of the spirit of God working in our lives. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, I'm so glad about it. Allow me for a moment just to also say Colossians 3 and 12 says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly beloved, clothe yourself in compassion, kindness, humility, and gentleness, and patience. Now, uh, as we move forward with this message, I want you to understand that God has uniquely chosen you as a special tool to be used in his kingdom and if we express unkindness toward people will they be convinced in any way about their relationship or even 
having a relationship with the Lord if you're an unkind person, if you're a mean person, you're an ugly acting neighbor, somebody cut a little bit over, over into your yard from the grass, you go knock on their door, you cut one foot in my yard. I don't like your, you cutting into my yard. I've seen people do that. And they're so unkind, so inconsiderate. Praise be to God. But we're here today to learn what God's word says. He said that love is kind. Love comes from God. This kind of love, that agape love comes from God. And if you express that kind of love, then you are going to be considerate of other people. You're going to look at their situations and sometimes people are down and out. They're going through the challenges of life. And yet, sometimes we don't understand. Some of you may have way with children. Not doing what you, they are supposed to do. But be kind, my brothers and sisters. Because guess what? You can discourage them. Didn't the Bible say that, fathers? Uh, don't discourage your children. Sometimes we can be so hard and unkind until we discourage them. And they leave, this, they leave the church. They leave whatever and never come back. Simply because they had an unkind daddy, an unkind mama. People that would not treat them right. Show the kindness of God. Be considerate. No, you don't let them run your life or run your home, but you can still be kind. Am I right about it? Our lives are to express the fact that we are enveloped and characterized by, the, by, by that kind of presence and being in our life. The presence of Almighty God. We have to show the characteristics that are a part of God Almighty. Oh, how ugly we would be if we were characterized by those things that are not good. Every time somebody sees you, they think of the bad things instead of the good of life. They think of you being unkind, unattractive, and so forth. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, we need to understand and ask ourselves the question. So what does, uh, I, I looked up the word, uh, uh, let's say Western Dictionary online defines kindness as the quality of the state of being kind, uh, a, a kind act, a kind act. You see, love is action. L listen, it, it, you, you can tell me you love me all you want to. But if I see it in your actions that you truly don't care or give a hoop about me. Your actions speak louder than your words. Am I right about it? Oh, husbands, you can tell your wife. Wives, you can tell your husband. I love you, baby. Yes, yes, yes. But if you're sitting here and, and you won't help out, you won't pay the rent, won't help out with the bills and all this, you do everything contrary to loving me, then that don't mean a hill of beans. I know I'm talking southern with this hill of beans stuff. Uh, but, 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 but I need you. I, I almost rather, I want to hear it every now and then. It's kind of nice to hear somebody that loves you. But praise be to God, I'd rather for you to show me that you love me <laughs> than to tell me that you love me. Uh, 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 love is action. We need to do something. Oh, we tell people you're somebody hungry on the street and we say, God bless you. I'm praying for you. Be good. God bless you. I'm praying for you right now. No, the brother's hungry. The sister need help. Help them and be kind. I don't know about you, but uh, God showed his kindness to us when he sent Jesus. He showed his kindness this morning when he woke you up, clothed in your right mind. When you open your eyes and you can see the sun rising. Praise God. And not only the sun rising in the sky, but the son of God rising in your heart. He showed his kindness to you. And you ought to express that kindness every day that you wake up. Hey, you got up out of the bed and, and there was food on your table, a roof over your head. God showed his kindness. The sun rises on the just and the unjust. Aren't you glad about it? It was the kindness of God that did all of this for us. And I'm so glad about his kindness because if, he, if it wasn't for him, we ask the question, where would we be? I don't know about you. But I know I will be lost somewhere, maybe even out of my mind. But the kindness of God decided to save a wretch like me. Somebody said I once was lost, but now I'm found. And it was only by the grace of all. I heard somebody say double thing. Uh, Deacon Wilson said they want about uh, twins. Praise God. Grace and, and mercy. <laughs> Uh, uh, that, 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 that saved me. Grace and the mercy of God that was placed in my life. I'm so, aren't you glad about it? Oh, I can shout right now. 
because of his grace and his mercy. I'm reminded, uh, y'all remember the first miracle that Jesus did at the wedding at Cana in Galilee. Uh, Jesus turned the water into wine. Uh, to keep the, the young newlyweds from uh, the terrible embarrassment of running out of wine. But it's interesting how, uh, gee, how, how kind he was in this situation. Uh, I'm so glad about it, but about the woman who was caught in adultery. Praise be to God. And they wanted Jesus to condemn her. And Jesus pointed out, he is, that is without sin. You cast the first stone. And I'm so glad he showed his kindness and said, neither do I. But go your way and sin no more. I'm so glad when he uh, confronted the blind and the leprous, Jesus compassionately and kindly healed them. He keeps on blessing us. Somebody said in the song, he keeps on blessing me over and over and over again. Yes, he does. Another great example of Jesus' kindness that he showed, he showed his, himself during the day when Jesus faced all kinds of interruptions. He was interrupted on every front. They wanted to kill Jesus. They wanted to get rid of him. But I'm so glad the story uh, found at the end in Luke chapter 8 one day when Jesus met a crowd. Uh, as he returned to Capernaum after healing the demon-possessed man who lived in the tombs on the other side of the sea, Jesus, as Jesus was ministering to the crowd, he was confronted by a man named Jairus, uh -huh, uh, who, whose daughter, had, he fed, Jairus fell at his feet, and he pleaded with the Lord of glory. Jairus had a 12-year-old daughter who was dying. And so as Jesus kindly made his way to the house, on his way, he met another woman who had uh, been, uh, uh, had a hemorrhage. She had been bleeding for 12 long years. Can you imagine? I can't even imagine. Praise God. Women, y'all can probably imagine that. But the, had been bleeding for 12 long years. And why he stopped and ministered to her knees. Praise be to God. He was in the crowd and Jesus said, somebody touch me. His disciples said, Lord, look at all these people around you. Show sure somebody to touch you. He said, I know that somebody touched me because power has gone from me. And I'm so glad that ultimately she spoke up and said, Lord, it was me. I touched you. Well, because the moment that I touched you, I felt, I felt my body heal. I tell you, he showed his kindness by healing her body. And then somebody came a little longer, a little later, and said, leave the master alone. Your daughter is dead. Oh, but Jesus said, no, no. He kept going, and he went there, and he healed the door. He kept being kind and kind and showing himself in every situation. Has he been kind to you? Somebody's body has been healed this morning. Somebody's been delivered this morning. Maybe the doctor gave you bad news, but God said, no, no, I'm going to heal that individual. Maybe there's something that happened in your life and you thought there was no way out, but you serve a God that can. And he showed his kindness and showed himself in that situation. Oh, praise be to God. That's the kind of God we serve. We serve a God. That will be there when you need him most. <laughs> yes, it, yes, it will. He comes to our rescue. He keep on showing his kindness. Uh, and sometimes in our lives, we're going to have to be interrupted. Yes, sir. We might be in a hurry. I'm told of the good Samaritan. Y'all know the good Samaritan story. Jesus not only showed love uh, by his example and kindness by his example, but he taught love. Somebody approached him one day, said, uh, 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 expert in the law, and said, who is my neighbor? And now, when I say expert in the law, this is like a lawyer, somebody who understands the word of God and able to dissect it and do all of the stuff that is necessary. But he was trying to trip Jesus up. And Jesus gave this story when Jesus was confronted with this question. He, who is my neighbor? Jesus answered by telling a story. And he said a man was going down to Jerusalem, he said, to Jericho, and he fell among robbers. And what's interesting about this, they, he said that they stripped him of his clothes, they beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. Then the priest came down the road. But the Bible says that the priest, now, this is the preacher. This is the man of God. This is the one that delivered deliver the word and say, God, uh, take care of your every need. But he passed by on the other side. Then here comes the deacon, the Levite. The Levite. Uh, yes, sir, the Levite came by. And the Bible says that the Levite passed by on the other side. 
Now, the least expected individual, I'm assuming from this story that that must have been a Jew that was half dead laying on the road. But a Samaritan, the least one that should have helped, the least one that they expected to help, he passed by, saw the man half dead, he bounded up his wounds, put him on his own donkey, took him to an inn, and, uh, and, and told the innkeeper the next morning, uh, if I owe you more, I'll be back through here. I'll pay you for it. Now, Jesus asked the expert in the law who was neighbor unto him. And the expert in the law said, the man who had mercy. I tell you today, when you are kind to people, when you are considerate of people's situation, and you know that they need help, and you help them in a situation like that, you're showing the kindness of God. You're showing mercy. You're showing the love of God in Christ. I tell you, <laughs> yes, sir. We all need to show that kind of love. And we need to express the love of God. We need to show that love every day of our lives. Because every time we ought to, th when we think about the goodness of God in our lives and what he has done, we ought to say, you know what, every opportunity that I get, I'm going to be kind to somebody. I'm going to show somebody the kindness of God. Because you don't know, one day somebody might have to do it for you. If you live long enough, you may be laying on your bed of affliction and somebody got to wake work on you in the hospital you don't know when you might need somebody so be kind to one another yes. now let's talk about this kindness in the life of the church now if you're holding grudges can't speak to folk doing things you ought not be doing hear me folks you're out of the will of God God is not pleased if you're walking around holding this stuff in your heart let us be kind to one another. Yes, and let's not be like the, the, the uh, now, now, now I do want to say something about the story that I just told you. The expert in law, he, he, did, he, he came up with the right answer. But some of us are like the two other guys. When we see somebody hurting, we just like riding down the road and watching a wreck. What do we do? Uh, it slows the traffic down. Sometimes a mile down. You say, what in the world's going on? And you get down there, it's just a couple cars sitting on the road. Somebody done a, a fender bender. But we got to, we'll look and we'll pass by on the other side. I'm not suggesting you stop in those situations, but I just want to use that as an illustration of how we do. We, we, uh, we, 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 and we, we don't have mercy on folk. We're like the other two guys, the preacher and the deacon, if you will, or the priest and the Levite. They, uh, these two guys, the fir the, 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 these first two guys, they expressed loving kindness to the man. They did not, rather, express loving kindness to the man in need. Those two guys had the attitudes, I want to keep my distance. And I'm curious, but I want to remain uninvolved. Listen, folks, uh, they were like the, 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 the people, like I said, about going down the road and looking on the side of a wreck. Yes, but in contrast to them, the Good Samaritan, what did he do? He showed the man that was in need love and kindness. He, yes, he did. The Good uh, Samaritan saw the needs and he, he saw the needs of the injured man and he went to his rescue. And so should we do the same. The Good Samaritan didn't take, didn't stop, just look and just look and not pay attention to the man. But he went over and bound up his wounds. He did everything that was necessary to help this individual. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, we should do the same. So expressing kindness is of God. That kind of kindness. What else can we say about kindness? I'm reminded of a story that I read about Abraham Lincoln the 16th president of the United States. Abraham Lincoln, you know, they didn't have all the media stuff like Obama. He used to go to the hospitals and different things. We see it on TV. But back then, you know, we didn't have all this media stuff. But the story is told where he, uh, uh, there, there, there was war going on during Abraham Lincoln's time. And he visited the veterans. And he visited the hospital. And there was a young man who was dying. And as he was dying, Abraham Lincoln went up to him and said, what can I do for you? He said, uh, he couldn't write. He couldn't do anything. He said, I want my mom. I want to write a letter to my mom. Abraham Lincoln took time, and he wrote the letter for the boy. He wrote the letter, and the boy was too weak to even sign it. It was interesting because Abraham Lincoln signed it for the boy, but he wrote it in this way. He said, uh, this is a letter uh, written by your son from Abraham Lincoln. 
And then when the boy looked down and saw it, he said, you are the president of the United States? You, are you truly? Is this, the, is this you? He said, yes, it is me. He said, is there anything else I can do for you? He said, he, uh, and, and, and the letter was uh, kind of challenging. He was saying goodbye to everybody. But he said this to Abraham Lincoln, will you hold my hand? Because I'm going to be gone soon. And Abraham Lincoln stayed there until the wee hours of the morning until that boy passed out of this world. What kindness. What kindness. This is the kind of kindness sometimes you may have to visit somebody in the hospital. Your life needs to be interrupted. You see those two gentlemen that I told you about in the story of the Good Samaritan. They were in a hurry. All of them may have been in a hurry, but one took time. Sometimes you're going to be interrupted. Your life is going to be interrupted. Sometimes it's going to cost you something. It may cost you a little money. It may cost you a little time. But whatever it costs, be kind. Sometimes all people need is a, hug, a loving hug. Be kind. Sometimes all a person needs is just you, you to tell them that you love them. Be kind. Sometimes all that, that, that person who works at the, uh, uh, the, the grocery store done had a hard day and you could just say, have a wonderful day. Be kind. You may be at the restaurant and, 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 and somebody just need a tip. You know they don't get paid much, praise God. Leave a nice tip, praise God. Be kind to folks. Somebody might need their grass cut, that old lady down the street, and they'll need their grass cut. Be kind. Show your kindness in some way, form, or fashion. People will appreciate it, but more importantly, God appreciates the fact that you are expressing that agape love. I don't know about you, but show kindness. I am going to attempt to show kindness to my brothers and sisters and those in the world. Let's be kind to one another. And let's be kind to each other in the life of the church. Let's be kind. Let's be considerate of each other's feelings. Yes, sir. Be considerate of your children's feelings, your grandchildren's feelings. Be considerate of one another. I know it's hard sometimes. I know it's hard when somebody is irate. I know it's hard when somebody just you just don't get along with. But you can still be kind. One more story before I take my seat. There was a woman woman she and her husband was sitting there he was watching the game y'all know how sometimes we can be when watching the game we don't want to be bothered right so uh, maybe you were watching the Carolina Duke game yesterday and your wife came up bothering you while you trying to watch the game and she wants to talk and all this kind of stuff and so he started talking junk to her and saying all of this negative thing these negative things to his wife hurt her feelings so bad but oh, the wife, she went to the kitchen and fixed him some chips and a sandwich and got him a, a, a Coca-Cola and brought it and, and, and set it before him and kissed him on the jaw and said, I love you. And then she got up and left. Then after a few minutes, he thought about that situation and said, you know what? I was really ugly to my wife and I was mean to my wife. And he went in the kitchen and he went into the other room and he apologized for it. See, she was kind to her husband. And I tell you, God expressed kindness to us and we ought to always be kind to one another. Husbands, be kind to your wife. Wife, be kind to your husband. Children, be kind to your parents. Parents, be kind to your children. Let's be kind to one another. Bible tells us love is kind. Not only is it patient, but it's kind. And we ought to be kind in every way, form, or fashion. There is no need to be ugly. There's no need to be bitter. There's no need to be too busy to help somebody. Even if you have to call somebody and say, look, I'll be there a little later. Got a need I need to meet. I got something I need to do. Help somebody. Be kind. That is the Christian way. Amen. Folks, make it right. If you need to ask somebody forgiveness, make it right. Make it right. Be kind. Let's be kind. We open the doors of the church. Let us stand in the presence of God and one another. If there's one here today who doesn't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, then I invite you to come right now to receive Christ as your Lord, as your Savior. If that's you, then I invite you to come right now. Perhaps there's someone else. You know Christ. You know he's the Lord of your life, but you need to be baptized. You haven't been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then we invite you to come. Then there may be others who want to join. First Baptist Church. You're not a member of a church in this community or you do belong to a church uh, somewhere and but you decided the Holy Spirit has touched your heart to want to become a part of the body of Christ right here on this corner. Then we invite you to come. 
We're going to let this choir, allow this choir to sing a song. And while they are singing, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart and come forward. Give the preacher your hand, but give God your heart. Sing, choir. While you're standing, I just want to know if anybody desires prayer. Just slip your hand up right where you are. The Lord knows what you've raised your hand for. You can take your hands down. He understands. Let us pray about those concerns now. Those of you that are listening online, God knows what you need. He's here to meet your every need. Let us take him time to pray. Father, we magnify your name. We glorify you for all that you are to us we glorify you today and lift you up in a mighty way we are your children and we bring all that we are to you first and foremost we ask that you will forgive us of all of our sins especially what we talked about today the sin of being unkind to others and help us to step into your will and be kind to do all that we can to help somebody to show love in action not just words to show that we care that we are concerned and to express that in a tangible way with our time, talent, treasure, with every fiber of our bodies that's in us. Speak, Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, we saw the hands. You saw the hands that went up. You know why they went up. You know the concerns of their life. And we ask, Lord, that you will indeed meet every child here today their every need for we know that all blessings come from you we know that we can call on your name and Lord it'll be like you come running 
to minister to us, writing to give us the petitions of our heart that are in accordance with your will. Lord, bless us individually, bless our families, and bless our church collectively. Do mighty works through us. Answer those prayers. Bring healing to our nation and the world. Touch these leaders that have just lost their minds. Touch, Lord, in a mighty way. Because we know that you are able to intervene. And that you will. We know that you hear our prayers. Speak, Lord. Speak to us. Speak through us. Allow your spirit to take control. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayer in advance. Work in our homes. Work in every aspect of our lives. Wherever we go, whatever we do, we know that you are present with us. Please, please, God, for your word tells us whatever we ask in your name, that you would do it in accordance to with your will. This is our prayer. We ask it all in the name of Jesus the Christ. We indeed do pray. Let everybody say amen. amen. You may take your seats. Praise be to them. Yes, Lord. Come on, somebody. Yes, Lord. From the bottom. Folks, let's trust God. If you say you love him with all of your heart, then that includes your money. And you will be obedient to his words. Malachi 3, 8 and following. Will a person rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. He says, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Don't hold God's money. You wonder why you're struggling? Don't hold God's money. You wonder why you're having a hard time? Don't hold God's money. You wonder why your bills can't, you can't meet all your needs? Don't hold God's money. Those that are faithful, God is going to take care of you. I want you to give as unto the Lord today. Trust God. You say you trust him. Then trust him with your, your tithes and offerings as well. Be faithful. Be committed. Don't hold back on God. And watch him bless you in a mighty way. Amen? Y'all with me? Okay, I don't hear too many people, but anyway, that's all right. That's all right. I hope y'all understand. Your pastor trusts God. And I hope you follow me. Amen? Amen. Amen. The ushers are coming at this time. We're going to take about offering. We want you to give. We believe in tithing here, which is one-tenth of your income. And, uh, and, and let the Lord do what he wants to do. You'll be able to stretch that 90% more than you can that 100% if you keep it to yourself. Amen? All right. Take care of your church. Take care of God's business right here at First Baptist Church and watch God move in a mighty way. The choir now is going to sing that song as we take up our offering.
Bethany Church, would you bow for an altar prayer? Our Father in heaven, we just thank you for your love and grace, your yeah. mercy. We thank you for teaching us about love. Yeah. We thank you for te teaching us about the offering. Your word says that you will multiply the offering. That Malachi says you keep the insects off your crops. We thank you for the offering and blessing every person in the sound of a voice. In Jesus' name, we give you all the praise and all the honor. Let everybody say amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love is patient. Love is kind. Remember that this week. And now, may the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each of us now, henceforth, and forevermore. Go in peace, my brothers and sisters. God bless you.